Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. Good evening. I have a um, relatively brief uh, report this evening. And I just want to continue um, our focus on our tenants initiative. Um, we are seeing um, gradual increases at, at this lower school, grades six through eight, and continue to track what's happening at the high school level. Um, we, ha we definitely have a lot of work to do. Uh, we want to have that number around 90%. And the uh, number of students that we are, we continue to struggle with are kids who, um, who are over age, and you'll see that with the continuing bar. But we are at the point now where we, we have uh, one of our administrators, we call her Leah the Lift. She's actually going out to homes at lunch and going to get kids and bringing them here to school. And that's been um, an initiative that's well received. Um, I also would say to the board that in future considerations with RTS, we have to think about um, how we give students a second chance to get to school if they miss the first bus. Because students are self-reporting that if they miss the first bus, then they can't get on another bus unless they pay and that's been a, a hindrance and a burden. So I think in future negotiations, we have to talk more about the busing situation, and how we allow students who might miss the first bus for a variety of reasons, could be oversleeping, but it also could be for child care or family care to get to school. RTS has been very flexible to their, to, um, uh, to their credit for individual students, but I think systemically, that might be a barrier for attendance in some of our high schools. Um, the behavior update, I won't go through all of that, but you will see, thanks on top you'll see that um, you know, we're trending in the right direction in terms of behaviors and total suspensions. Um, we have seen a spike at lower school in eighth grade, and um, Dr. Wilson is uh, working with a team of teachers there to, to mitigate some of that with students and doing a ton of peace circles and having family meetings for a group of kids who continue to, um, to get involved in conflict. Um, but I'm very, um, I'm very confident that our school social workers and counselors and administrative team can work with those families and those parents have been very accommodating and they've taken off work and have come to school and they've been engaged fully in that process. And so I appreciate that effort, but you'll see a spike, slight spike in lower school um, for the last couple months if I showed you um, some of the disaggregated data. Just to remind our parents that upcoming um, math assessments are here, they're right around the corner. Um, and I thank the students who have taken advantage of Saturday school and after school tutoring sessions. We've done a ton of work with target interventions, trying to find the specific standards and skills that students struggle with and giving them targeted intervention. Um, not making the assessments stress kids out, but also but trying to use the assessments to have um, a more targeted approach to support. And that's been um, a monumental effort with our teachers, grades six through um, eight, and our teacher leaders. Just a reminder to the school board and to the community that this weekend we have the Q Symposium. It's a Center for Urban Education Success. It's a spring symposium. We have had a number of teacher leaders, teachers, parents are involved in this, as well as our administrative team, um, prepare for this day and working with a number of stakeholder groups. There will be uh, between 250 and 300 individuals in attendance on Saturday. Um, nearly every Monroe County school has an administrator or teaching team um, coming. I think it's over 150 uh, RCSD teachers, mostly not um, teachers from East. And we have a school board member from Buffalo coming, as well as some, um, some political folks. So just remind individuals that if they want to come out the board, you're more than welcome to. You don't have to sign up. Just show up. Um, it's 9 to 2 o'clock. And uh, the first sessions begin at 9.30, and they go through the evening. Is there There's a keynote? Be a, mm -hmm? Is there a keynote? Excuse me. There's a keynote. If the keynote is a professor from Syracuse University, and she's going to talk about um, literacy um, and engaging students of color, specifically in her research. Yep. And they re the keynote, I believe, is at 1? Okay. I believe it's at 12.30 or 1. Thanks. Yep. Um, just congr congratulations to uh, the East United um, Lacrosse uh, team. They held a festival um, where there were a ton of um, students who showcased their, um, their talents. I want to give a special thanks to the City of Rochester, um, Carlos Cotto, um, and, and all the athletic directors throughout Rochester who have done a great job promoting um, lacrosse for all kids in the city. Um, it has taken a team effort, and um, I, again, I want to thank Carlos Cotto um, for helping to organize and, and push um, the, the program throughout the district. And, and they won their first game a couple weeks ago. They won pretty big out in Batavia, um, and they're, they're competing day in and day out. So again, if, if, you get, if you have a chance to come out and see the cross this year, um, those kids are, are working extremely hard and getting better. Um, Logan Newman is um, the, an individual at East who just received the Life Changer of the Year Award. Only 17 recipients um, received this over, out of uh, 800 nominees. Logan is the individual best known for producing glasses for kids throughout the city. 
This year, I believe the number of glasses that will be um, delivered will be well over 1,200. Um, and so he continues to push that. And he was recognized um, by a former student, actually, who we hired as a paraprofessional to help out in that classroom. She nominated him, and he, he and his family were surprised on Superintendent's Conference Day with the award. Um, it's, he's well received. He's one of many teachers doing incredible things for the community. I'm happy that Logan and his family were able to be recognized on, um, on this past week. The uh, upper school debate team, um, after many years of trying, they finally um, won uh, the high school upper school debate competition. I want to thank the University of Rochester uh, staff who, are, who have helped train our students, but also the number of teachers at East who spend countless hours supporting them and their development to compete. These kids were extremely um, happy to come back with first place. And their first question was, who keeps the trophy? <laughs> so, ah, okay. And so the trophy is on display in the main office for all to see. And so I really um, thank those individuals and those kids for trying hard. They were extremely, extremely happy. Um, and, and the topics were, um, were of importance to them. And then last but certainly not least, uh, we have, um, I want to thank all the students so far who have really transitioned themselves um, towards a college-going culture. And our counselors and social workers uh, put together this wall if you walk into East. Every time a student receives an acceptance letter, it gets posted. And um, many of our kids are receiving, are receiving scholarships. We're trying to track the dollar amount right now, so we can report on that at the end of the year. Um, but we have a ton of students who, are, um, who will be attending various colleges throughout uh, New York State. I also want to thank some of the private donors um, in the community who have volunteered to send care packages or pay for books or computers to support these students and their parents um, with their transition. There's been a, a lot of silent angels out there who, who are donating considerable amount of funds to help kids transition to college so that they, so they are able to persist and so that money is not uh, one of their main op, um, um, barriers and obstacles. And then on 5-4, March 4, there's a track invitational at 4.30 um, at East. And the, what's unique about this is it's a co-ed track invitational. So the boys and girls will run together in various meets. That's a citywide um, invitational. And it's May 4th at 4.30. And that concludes my report. Dr. Downs, a couple of quick questions, sort yep. of a bullet series of questions. If you go back to your attendance update, um, I notice it says 91 for grade 6, 92, 90, 83. Yep. What cohorts uh, are, are the, the grade 6, 7, and 8, uh, does that represent the students that you've taken in it would since be, you guys have taken over? It would be up and through grades uh, 11, actually. Right. So it depends on, so the grade 11 kids, we've had grades 9, 10, and 11, but the kids that we've had um, who entered uh, middle school in their first year would be the kids entering uh, ninth grade next year. So it depends on when kids come in, because you can come in in sixth grade or right. seventh grade, but we've had, I guess, every kid in grades 11 have been, in 10 and 9 have been with us for at least three years. All right, so I'm looking at grade 9, the, yep. the attendance rate is very, very low. Yep. How do you, why, how do you, how can you explain that? So there's two things. The 83% are all ninth graders. Mm -hmm. So this will include kids who are, are, who have, are ninth grade by credits. So it could be a kid who's 20 years old, counting in that grade nine number. The grade, the new next to that are kids yeah. who are first time ninth graders. Right. And then the continuing. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's how I, that's how I read. So it's, oh, so the, it's nine a, is broken down to new and continuing. Right. So I the see. 83 is made up of the 88 and 63. I, I get it. Okay. Yep. And the continuing are overage, undercredited? These are kids who are typically in um, Freedom School, which is our uh, task preparation program. Um, they're in our Quest program, trying to catch up on credits. Um, or some of those kids are actually transitioning to Job Corps. Okay. Uh, next question, if you go to your college-bound uh, presentation. Yep. Do you guys have a baseline for when you took over, in other words, the percentage of kids, young folks that went to college when you took over at East and what it is now? We don't, and I know that, that the uh, National Clearinghouse is trying to, they are creating a database for that for all schools to track. Because even if we know the, cl the, court, the, the colleges the kids got accepted to, we don't know if they actually attended right. or if they persisted and finished ninth grade and continued on the 10th. So I know the National Clearinghouse is actually tracking that data nationally to, to see if kids are going through and, and persisting. Um, I know that's, I think they're in the final stages of having that clean and ready. I know it's available for some schools, some public schools, but not private. So I, I believe that's, that's one of the tracking mechanisms that will be used nationally for all Because, you know, it's, it's one thing to know that your kids are graduating and we're increasing the graduation mm -hmm. rate, but are they college or workforce ready? Right. Uh, so to have that as a measure, 
yeah. an objective, I think, would be critical. So. The other thing we're tracking internally as well is the, um, and this is it's hard to track averages, but because it's messy. Um, but trying to see if, as more kids pass certain uh, key uh, benchmarks, like the region's living environment or, or math, are they getting higher scores on those? Are they reaching the 80? Right. So I know you've been in East a number of times. You'll see on our walls 22, 5, 80, 22 credits, five regions, and 80 or higher on each exam. And so we encourage as many kids to take the exam as possible until they reach an 80. That's been the culture that Marlene Blocker has, um, has insisted occur. And so we, we try to use that 80 benchmark in all those areas. And so we're seeing a number of kids retaking exams, a number of kids receiving 80s, but we don't have a clean system to say how it's compared to previous years. And the more kids you have taking past exams, the average gets distorted. So we're, we're, that's something that we are tracking, not just the passing rate, but the, um, the average score on those exams as well. And then I just have one other quick question. Um, I know I wasn't there. Uh, I know Ray presented at uh, ESA regarding the graduation rate and where we're at. Yep. Um, have you presented to ESA or have you made any recent presentation about where our kids are at in terms of the finish line graduating? I have, I, I, have, away. I have not personally um, shared that. I've shared that with the district, um, with Barb and, and others that we've talked about preliminary numbers. So I'm not certain if Ray added that in his presentation or not, but um, I didn't see the presentation. But Ray, are you here? Are, was, yeah. are his numbers included in your numbers? So we, we actually have um, a subcategory. We can, we can resubmit that for yeah. you. So when you presented to ESA, and I, and I apologize to Commissioner Shepard that I was not there. She chairs ESA. But the uh, data for East was in your presentation? It was in a section of the presentation. OK. So we can, but I'll talk to Sean. Yeah. I didn't see the presentation, but I mean, yeah, I can definitely share that. I could, I know that right now we're projecting between 58 and 60 percent, 55 and 60 percent graduation rate this year. And when you guys took over, that's for me, that's the baseline. Yeah. When you took over, you were projected 30, to be 30, what? It was projected at 19. We got to 33, I believe. In your first year? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? All right. Thank you very much, yeah, Dr. Thank Nelms. you.